What's up, my friends? Welcome back. John Levesque here. I know it's been a few weeks since we saw each other and we did a tutorial, so today I am back with a great one. I'm going to go ahead and bring on my guest because you know I always have one. Yash, what's going on, bro? Hey, John. All good. How are you? I'm doing good. My friends, this is Yash Agarwal. If you're brand new to the channel, you may not have seen him before. He's a power automate expert. He's a super user in their community. He's been someone I've been connected to for a long time. And now he has started kicking ass at DocuSign as well. And so he's back today to show us a more advanced take on something we've already covered uh, together. And so in a previous tutorial, actually go ahead and check the description. I'll have some of those linked there. In a previous tutorial, Yash showed us how to use Power Automate to generate uh, information into a DocuSign template that could then be sent to a user for signature. Today, he's going to show us how to insert anchor text, which will then be filled in by Power Automate. Uh, and then will be sent to a user, but that user won't just sign. They'll have some dynamic options that they can mess around with, which will kind of customize the experience that they have, and then they'll be able to sign. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out of the way. Yash, before you take off into the tutorial, go ahead and introduce yourself real quick. Let people get to know you. If you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, you can scan this QR code on the screen. You can also follow me on Twitter from the link and visit my blog. I'm also a Power Super user on the Power Apps and Power Automate community forums. So if you want me want to reach out over there, you can do that as well. Awesome. And, and I'll have all Yash's yeah, info down in the description as well. So you can click on all that stuff to get connected with him. We'll be looking into DocuSign and Power Automate and deep dive into tabs. What exactly tabs do, how we can structure them on a uh, envelope or an ag agreement that we're trying to send it to someone and uh, we'll see what routing orders are we can, we'll just see all those minor basic aspects of creating an envelope and then sending it for signing when there's one signer when there are multiple signers involved and so on so what do we do today so first let's see docusign envelopes and first let's create a template document then we'll see how we can put those tabs and placeholders which are going to be actually anchor tabs and then we put data over there what is the role of conditional tabs? How do you put it here? And then how do you actually get that data filled by a user? We can put some rules and we'll see everything. And then on flow, we'll see uh, the flow is going to obviously trigger on an event, populate the template, and then send for signing using the e-signature API. So awesome. let's get started then. I'm excited um, for this one. I like I like next step evolutions. You know, when we do something, then we make it better. I like that. Yeah. So here I have a very basic general um, contractor agreement, as you can see, so it says contractor agreement between a company and then a contractor name and the contractor address over here, then some usual stuff. And then over here, as you come down on the annexure, we see that the contractor can confirm an availability of so many hours or so many days per month. And there are two payment options that the company offers, which could be like you can generate a monthly invoice or you can generate a bi-weekly invoice to the company and they have certain terms that they'll pay or process these invoices on. And okay. then um, I have an option over here. So let's say I'll select an option, but then we also need to say or we need to affirm that the person who's selecting this option has actually read it. So we have an initial anchor over here and the person can uh, put their initials once they confirm a choice from the uh, two options that are available. And then again, some generic stuff here. And lastly, we have this uh, contract commencement, which is like, let's say if a contractor is available for immediate starting, then you have the immediate start option that they can select. Or if they have a preferred date that they want to join, they can select that. But then once they select a preferred date, they'll have to enter this date. So we'll see that how we can uh, conditional uh, put a conditional logic over here so that once they select immediate start, they don't have to populate this, but if, if they select a preferred date, then they'll have to provide us a date from when they want to start or they are comfortable to start. Got it. And then once they put that over here, we have a for place for the contractor that they can sign and the signature date, which is auto populated again, the moment they sign. And then for the company, like uh, once the contractor signs and sends, the company uh, authorized personnel can also review everything and sign and put the contract into place. So to better understand what we're doing over here, we'll see that you'll see there are placeholders that I've put between two slashes. So it's good to have those so that in case the same term appears somewhere in the um, document, it gets uh, this gets a unique identifier kind of a thing. 
And gotcha. what happens is when we process this on Power Automate and send it over to the um, DocuSign API for populating this template and putting the actual tabs here, it puts tabs in place of this, but then uh, it, it, it's like it places those tabs over this text. So what we'll do is we'll change the text color of this one to the background color, which is white. So I'll just select this. You'll, we won't see anything. And similarly, I have one over here. Then there's one over here. You know, this reminds me of a trick I used to do in school where uh, to get word counts right in text, I would I would like put dashes in between the words and then I would color them white so it looked like <laughs> spaces, but it would all count as one word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was useful when we used to write abstracts and all that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so we're just coloring off everything to the background color. And this one as well. Okay, there we go. So everything is colored now. Um, nope. Is it? Yeah, okay. Let's just quickly review. Okay, now what happens is once we have this agreement in place, we also have to create the body that we have to send to the API. And uh, there are two or three different methods that you can call the API, but I've used one from a previous video of yours, John, where you create a custom collector that's along with Vivek, and I've yep. used the same one to create the connector already. Perfect. So I have a connector created, but before we go to that, what we're going to do is we're just going to first quickly create a SharePoint list here. Uh, where we track data. So I'll just create a small one. And since we want all the data to be filled by the um, signing user itself, we'll have very less uh, metadata that we'll put on the list from our end. Okay. So let's create a blank list and name it as. So while he's doing this, if you're curious what he's talking about, uh, check the description. Myself and another friend of ours, Vivek, uh, he created a video with me where he shows us how to create a custom connector to do OAuth authentication to the eSignature API. It's a lot more secure. It's actually supported by DocuSign as legacy auth is going away. So Yash went ahead and followed that method. Again, check the description. There'll be a link down there. Okay. And um, so now we'll just have the title and email, but I'll show what else we can do later on. Um, we'll come to flow and start building our flow first. So let's start a new flow and select automated. In our scenario, what we have is when a user uh, logs some data to SharePoint, as soon as an item is created, we want to trigger this flow and send over the agreement. Okay. And uh, if you want to add certain more steps in between such that the agreement is first reviewed internally by the team, we can add approval processes and SharePoint document approvals and so on. But for the sake of this video, we'll just keep it very direct. In real life, and, you'd, you'd put an approval. You could even put a DocuSign approval. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, as soon as the item is created, we just have this one action that we want to send agreement. So I'm going to go to custom connectors and select the DocuSign connector and uh, send envelope is an action I've put over there. And it just accepts body here. Now the part comes where we actually build the body of this uh, action. And I already have something in place here and we'll add more actions in there. But as you can see, um, I'll just expand this and zoom it in. So the first part here is like, uh, first we are going to put the file in document base 64, which is our template and uh, put a name to the template. Then the next one is the email subject, which uh, goes to the user, like what is the subject of the email when the agreement is sent. And then there's a recipients object here in which we have signers. And uh, as you can see, I have the email and name where the recipient ID and order is one. This means that the agreement will be sent first to this user whose uh, email will be coming here. And they are the first one who's going to uh, come across all these tabs. So in the signers array, we have individual objects for each signer. For the first signer, I have a date sign tab. And then I have checkboxes where they can select certain uh, options that we're providing them. 
And then uh, there are basically four checkboxes in our scenario where we first ask them to select the pattern of invoicing. The second one is when we ask them to select what date, uh, what's their availability like. And then after that, as you can see here, we have tab groups. So this is again another tab feature per se on the DocuSign eSignature API so that you can create uh, group labels on individual tabs. So for example, I have these checkbox tabs and there I have the tab group label as checkbox. And on the checkbox group, I have a group rule that a user will have to select at least one of these two options or uh, one of any number of options that I'm providing. And it will also give them a validation message to select one option. Nice. Now, what happens is if they don't select the option, they'll not be able to complete that uh, agreement or they'll not be able to completely sign and send it over to the next person. So that's a validation check over here. And then what? Uh, there's another thing which is um, as you can see here, I have checkbox group one also, where I have the anchor tag as CB2, but then there are two different tab labels, checkbox one and checkbox two. So the second one says that uh, I'm available from a particular date only. And therefore, if you see here, the start date anchor tag, there is a conditional parent label and the conditional parent value here. So on nice. the conditional parent, we are checking for checkbox two and the value should be on only then this field is going to be visible and mandatory for the user to fill and so, so on. Cool. I yeah. love it. I love it. Then this was for the first signer. The second signer is actually the person who's um, from the company responsible for signing or maintaining this agreement. So we have put the recipient order as two and the routing order as two. And then there are certain fields that this person can access, which is the date sign tab. And they'll have to put their name and their signature. That's it. Now, nice. the uh, good thing with Power Automate when you're working like this is if you have multiple users, you can parameterize or variableize these recipient IDs and orders as well using variables. And that's how the process can be uh, created in an efficient way. Now, what we have to do is we'll first actually have to bring in the document. I missed that action here. So um, let's do get file content using path. And I have already saved this, so I'm going to select that file. And then in this action, we're going to put the entire body from here. So I'll just do control C and paste things here. What we have to do is like, um, remove this because every time you edit for some reason it goes back to the previous value copy this it's just expecting a base 64 so it does not need the schema validation there and therefore we'll uh, select the key that has the base 64 which is dollar content and get rid of this okay. now to verify that it's going to the email from uh, you don't have a get item action here so we're going to say select it from our trigger and same for the title okay since we're using so much of json sometimes it's it gets stuck hmm. good old okay. power automate <laughs> <laughs> And here also, I'll just put the same person um, so that I use the same email. Or else, let's put a different one here. I'll put my personal email. OK. Now that we have this, I'll save it. And let's check this out. Please name your flows. If you don't get in the habit of naming your flows, you'll have a big pile of flows and you'll have to go through each of them. Like, what does this do? <laughs> and I've manually forced it. Now let's add an item here. So I'm going to put mine only again and um, put the email as another one. Uh, let's put the Yahoo here. Do you own all the Ash Agarwal 1651 emails? Yes, more or less everyone. 
on <laughs> Yahoo, on Gmail, on Outlook, Hotline, everywhere. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. So you'll see that uh, the flow ran successfully and it has sent the envelope. We'll see all the details here, but let's see the actual thing that it has sent. So as you can see, the email is here. It has the details. Please DocuSign the contractor agreement. And let's review this. I love how simple you make this look. It's always like a, like a symphony, but yet like to recreate this is not as easy as you make it look. But I love that you, it, it just, it, it comes out of you so simply. And um, you start from here, it starts giving you all those uh, intuitive kind of a experience. So it says, put your full name here and it's a required field. I put my name here. Then it says, put your address here. It's again required. I just didn't put the labels here because uh, we were having this tap routing. But if you want, you can also put labels in here. Okay. So I'll put just address and space over here. Fill in. And then as you go down, it says that, okay, I'm confirming that uh, this is my availability. So let's say 20 hours. And then there are two payment options I can check box. So if, if you see, as soon as I hover here, it says that you'll have to select one option. So I'll nice. say monthly here. And it says required, required, and then you move. And then after selecting this, I'm acknowledging that I have finally said that I'm taking the monthly one. So another initial here. And it already prompts everything. So I just adopt an initial. So it, it comes up like this. And then you see here, so the start date right now, there is no block. If I select immediate start, nothing happens. If I remove this and if I select preferred date, it will make sure that I put a start date here. So let's say 1-8. And for the contractor, the signature date is already populated. I sign here and finish the document. Done. Now it has sent it to the second person on the email. So it goes to my other email account. Let's quickly open it. So you see here, it says uh, I've sent you a document to review and sign. I'll start reviewing this document. It will already fill more or less everything that we did uh, from my other email account regarding the name and all those details. So you'll see those here. It has the data. I'll scroll down. It shows me the checkbox. It shows the 20 hours I've filled. And the thing is, uh, you can also change the font of this, font size of this input that you're expecting from the user also. Again, on the body when we're constructing that, yes. it shows the initial, blah, blah, blah. I can put my name here and sign it. So. Finish. Man, that is awesome. Totally. <laughs> And then, um, so once we've done this, uh, there's also one more thing that uh, we missed. But again, I, we can just quickly review that. So, I love that you just completed a bunch of API stuff and it says, you've completed it. Would you like to join our 101 webinar? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so this is the process of actually just sending the agreement and signing it off and everything. Once the user signs it, uh, the initiator gets an email with a PDF of the signed document. But then um, there's another thing that we can do, which is, let's say we've uh, put these tabs over here. Now we also want to get what was there in that, uh, I mean, what, what all details were filled up by the user. So for that, you can set up another flow and which is, I'll go here done we're not done yet there's more yeah. all right so now we go back um, to my flows and we'll start creating another flow um, so the first part was sending it over the user fills it and signs it now let's say if you want to move ahead and automate one more part here what you'll do is uh, select an automated cloud flow and skip this and we're going to use the docusign connector now and every time when we're using this DocuSign connector, we'll see two, the DocuSign and DocuSign demo. And this is basically, um, since we're using a demo, a trial account, we're going to use DocuSign demo. If you're using the production account, you can use the DocuSign connector here. This is a very basic difference and 
uh, it took a couple of hours for him to figure this out initially. Yes, yes. That uh, and, thank you for explaining that. That's an important thing to know. Uh, if you're working in production, if you're not using a demo account, go use the other one. If you're using a demo account, a, de a developer account, you use this one. Yeah. And I'll select the account ID. Let's name a test connection here. And you can select an env uh, envelope event. So send, delivered, completed, declined, voided. We'll select completed. And after that, I'll just do a compose action here to show the trigger outputs. And so now the ash is going to show you how this works. But if you wanted to be real fancy, like you could take this information and go plug it back into the list to yes. then match the rest of your customer information to complete their record. Okay. And uh, you can also add further steps where you can extract the signed document and save it back. Let's do that actually. Okay. So okay. You just select DocuSign. It's a quick one. And um, get the documents. Account ID, envelope ID is from the trigger. I want the certification of complete and create file. Okay. Let's just put it here on the shared documents itself. Okay. Um, let's name it as sign contractor agreement. Again, um, it's like this is an entire cycle story. So the envelope status changes gets as the uh, envelope ID. And uh, in the previous flow, when we sent over this envelope to the user, we saw that it returned with an envelope ID to us. That can be stored again on your SharePoint or your database and used as a unique identifier to get the mm -hmm. um, data and write it back over there. And put the file content here, save. Okay. I love it. You're like, let's just do that. <laughs> and we're just going to quickly run the flow again, the previous one. Um, let's just resubmit it. So, yeah, it runs on the same data. Sometimes it just happens uh, when, I mean, you blink your eye and you open it and it runs successfully. Sometimes it takes forever. Well, we're doing a demo, so of course it's going to take longer. <laughs> It's done. So um, I'll go back to the other account. And uh, this is the completed from the previous one. But we're going to do the new one here. Review and let's do this quickly. Start, continue. Tab address, um, 20 hours. Select monthly, scroll down, initial, demo. Preferred, or let's do immediate on this one. No. Sign, finish. Okay. Yash made a good decision hiring Yash. <laughs> 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 okay, it shows me a new message here. Zero minutes review. And at the same time, I'll come here, get data from the signed docs, and we'll just have it on the run history. Okay. Continue. Start. Finally hired. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. Quite a quick start too. Lucky he can start <laughs> tomorrow or today. <laughs> and coming back here, it should trigger in a few yep. seconds. There you go. There it is. I'm sure by the time it loads, it's already run. So I'm going to go to SharePoint and go to Documents while it loads. Yep. Yeah. There, there it is. <laughs> so you Look can see all the details. Amazing. Everything and the details of, uh, I mean, the signature certificates, basically. Amazing. And events. Yep. It's great. So, I mean, imagine taking your contractor process and fully automating it like this and then being able to take those records and store it right alongside the information you first collected. Being able to take all those outputs that they gave you, their address, the hours, the date, when they can start, all that, and being able to move it dynamically to your system of record. Like, ah, this opens up so many possibilities, Yash. I love this. Yeah. You see here, so we have all the data from our custom tabs. Like um, in the signed one, I have the full name here. My name was there. And then the contractor address, we have the address input. Availability is 20 hours. So basically, you can get all of this data and uh, write it back to the data source and finally complete the process that way. Amazing. Amazing. Oh. I love this, Yash. This is cool, man. Thank you so much for coming and showing this process. I love, again, like I said, I love how we kind of took this V1 process and now yes. evolved it and it's just getting better and better, man. Yeah, totally. I mean, there's a lot more uh, we can still do. And again, it's on a learning path. So we'll probably see in the next coming videos. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Well, for you guys at home, if you want to connect with Yash, go ahead and get down to the description so you can find him on LinkedIn or Twitter or his blog. He is available. If you would like him to come and help you with your Power Automate or DocuSign implementations, go ahead and reach out to him. He would love to hear from you. So like I said, there's a lot of info down in the description. There's previous videos that we've done together. There's a video with Vivek that shows how to create this custom connector. So for all the previous learning that leads up to this, make sure to check below. Yash, thanks bro for always, like as always, for coming on the channel, for being here, for sharing your knowledge. Really, really appreciate you always coming and being so open and willing to share with the community, man. Thank you so much, John. It was a great learning experience for me as well. Awesome. All right, you guys know what to do. Hit that like button, get subscribed if you're not already so you don't miss any more videos. Much love from me. I'll see you in the next one.